Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be doing a foundation review and we are going back to powder foundation because powder foundation is something that I just, I've loved for such a long time. We are actually using a product that I have repurchased recently because I've been through a whole one in the past. The Jane Iredell Pure Rest Mineral Powder Foundation. I have the shade Radiant. Something to note with the Jane Iredell Pressed Powder Foundation is that that depending on where you purchase this from, you will need to buy the insert and the compact separately. The compact I have, which is kind of like this soft kind of rose gold metal round compact, this is no longer available on their website. It's now a square, I think, white compact, and those retail for $21. So you need to look at that extra $21 unless you're gonna put it in something like a Z palette that is going to go into the overall cost of this foundation. However, if it's foundation you love that's a one-time purchase so not a huge expense in the overall picture. Here in Canada, the insert alone retails for $57 for 9.9 grams of product, which breaks down to $5.76 per gram. If you're gonna be adding on the compact plus the foundation refill insert, that is going to mean this foundation is going to cost upfront $78. It's a pricey foundation, but some people really love this. Something nice about Jane Iredell products is they are safe for post-procedure skin, which is something that we use a lot in aesthetics to balance out redness, bruising, etc. I do have a little bit of a bruise on my forehead from a little bit of an at-home injury, which we'll talk about in the application. This does come in 23 shades and claims to have a matte finish. To see how I like to apply this foundation and my thoughts and opinions, stay tuned and let's jump right into the foundation application. We're going to start off with concealer and that is something I'm eager for because I have this nice bruise right in the middle of my forehead. Forehead. I'm trying a new to me kinetic toning device and I don't know if you're like me but a lot of times I will start using a product and then think while I'm doing the treatment oh I need to look at the directions I decided to start right in the middle of my forehead which normally when you're trying something out you would start within the, like a more discreet area I go right for like the gold right in the middle and yeah it, it backfired today so we are gonna start with concealer the concealer I was testing out this week is not a new concealer I've used it before on my channel but kind of got push to the back. This is the Lancome Tinty Dull Ultra Wear All Over Concealer and I have shade Ivoire C110. I know I want more coverage right here so I'm gonna apply a little here and then just a little bit under my eyes. The rest of my face is looking pretty good so I'm gonna apply a dot here a little bit right here to brighten and right there. And then to blend my concealer I'm gonna be using my Hourglass Spanish Concealer Brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Oric Glow Lust. This is the newer version of the shade Morganite, and I'm apply this right to the top of my cheekbones. My complexion is very glowy, like a lot more glowy than I normally like it. A lot of times with powder foundations, especially ones that lean matte, I like my skin to have more of a satiny finish, so I overcompensate with kind of moisture and glow under the product because the product will mattify what we have under. And I'm gonna give a quick mist of Max Fix Plus, another press over with my dry sponge, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of my powder. This is the Tatcha Silk Loose Powder. We use a little eyeshadow brush. This is an eyeshadow brush from Jane Iredell. This is the Blending and Crease Brush. Take a little bit of that right under my eyes. I like to do that step sometimes when I'm applying a powder foundation because when I apply a powder foundation, I conceal under. If I'm really trying to conceal something for a perfected look or I have something like this where I'm trying to cover, then I want to set it because when I start buffing on my powder foundation, if it's set with powder, it's less likely to move. And you can also build a little bit more coverage with the powder foundation. So I'm gonna let this kind of sit on my skin. I'm gonna give it one more mist with my MAC Fix Plus. And we're gonna let this kind of set in while we talk about the different sunscreens and primers I use throughout the week. The first base I used this week was my Olay Regenerous Mineral SPF. This gives my skin pretty much a natural finish. It does give a subtle luminosity, but normally the finish this gives is kind of canceled out by whatever kind of complexion product I apply on top. So day one, I use 
use this along with the Fenty Pro Filter Primer. This is the Soft Matte Instant Retouch Primer. This combination gave me a soft matte finish, but I found with this powder foundation that soft matte finish was just a little too matte. And while my skin didn't feel dry, tight, or uncomfortable, it just looked a little bit more dry than I like it to. Not a bad combination, not my favorite combination. If you're someone who's really oily, you might really like that combo. Following day, I tried something I do a lot more with powder foundations, and that's where I'll use tinted sunscreen underneath to give myself a little bit of coverage because I don't like to build a powder foundation up to a full opaque coverage because I feel like it just looks a little heavy. By adding a little bit of color correction and a tiny bit of coverage with a tinted sunscreen underneath my powder foundation, it just gives me more of that kind of realistic skin finish that I like. With the two tinted SPF, since they're both a mineral base, I a layer of the Olay Regenerous first, Elta MD UV Physical SPF 41. This is a great skin tone match for me. It gives me a very sheer coverage. It just is enough to balance out redness, a natural satiny finish. Areas where I wanted more glow to the skin, I used the Makeup Revolution Glass Skin Primer. Beautiful combination. And this worked well under the powder foundation after I messed up on the first side. On the first side, I just started kind of swiping it on. It stuck with this primer a little too much. So then I felt like I needed to stipple over the primer, then kind of buff around. My natural oils did start to break through where I applied this, I did look greasy. So if you have very dry, dehydrated skin, you don't produce a lot of natural oil or sebum, you might really like this. With not just this powder foundation, but most kind of foundations where you want a little bit more glow and it's quite affordable. So all in all, this was a nice kind of layered combo, but it wasn't my favorite. Following day, Color Science. This is the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Flex. This is an SPF 50 with a PA rating of three plus, and this is in the shade fair, I believe. It just says for fair skin tones. This is one that starts white and adjusts to your skin tone. You can definitely get a light medium coverage if you apply this in two layers. It's pretty much, it might be the foundation I take with me when I go to the beach soon because this, this gives you a lot of coverage and it looks great on the skin. Where I wanted a little bit of glow and some smoothing, I used my Guerlain Meteorites Primer. This was a good makeup day to where I wanted to just do this look for the rest of the week, but I need to try out some different things. This is just a great foundation primer. When you want to add luminosity to the skin, but you don't want it to look greasy. It's got a smoothing property to it. It's very brightening. It's just a very kind of complexion enhancing primer. Really love this with powder and liquid foundations. Next day, I wanted to try out a different base sunscreen. So I used my Anessa sunscreen. Really nice kind of luminous finish. Applied this all over. And then I used my NYX Bear With Me Cannabis Sativa Oil Radiant Perfecting Primer. This is nice. This on its own is a little too dark for me so it gave me a little bit of like a warm bronzy orange tint which in conjunction with the foundation made me look a little greasy and I did apply this all over using this again I would kind of once again use it more towards the perimeter for like a luminous bronzing effect but foundation wore well over this yesterday and the combination I'm doing today which has turned out to be one of my favorites it was using the sunscreen from Espar this is the water splash sunscreen SPF 50 plus with a PA rating of 4 plus nice one it goes on sheer. It gives a slightly luminous finish. It has a tiny bit of a green tint. It doesn't really do too much for color correcting, but it's just a nice base for makeup. And then to add some more luminosity all over the skin, I used this whipped primer from Flower Beauty Supernova Celestial Priming Whip. This is very much like a muted, purpley, whipped, moussey primer with a little bit of a gold reflect to it. I love this. It's quite smoothing. It's quite hydrating. It's quite plumping. They do suggest using the Jane Iredell Handy Brush. This is a nice little brush for me. It just feels like it takes forever to build up coverage. And I did use this for the first few days when I was testing this foundation out again. So the brush I enjoy using with this foundation is an It From Ulta brush. This is the Airbrush Complexion Perfection Number 115 brush. Slanted flat synthetic brush. I do like to kind of press in, get a nice layer on the brush. And then with the Jane Iredell, and it's not like your traditional mineral powder foundation where you're gonna buff. This foundation is designed to be straight on the skin. That being said, use a very light hand because the more pressure, the more you're gonna deposit. I'm going to start, dipple, and pull down. I like to avoid the areas where I applied concealer first and then focus on the areas of my skin where I did not apply any concealer. Then I'm gonna stipple and drag down. And then I can take a 
little bit on the side of my nose. Here is one half of my face with the Jane Iredell Pure Press Powder Foundation. Here is just my prep work and concealer I've done. So with foundation, without foundation. Let me know your thoughts. What do you feel about the coverage? What do you feel about the finish? It is definitely more of a matte finish. So it's kind of canceled out of the luminosity I've applied under, but throughout the day, as it kind of meshes with my skin, that luminosity will come through to create more of a really nice satiny finish. Okay, so here it is on both sides of my face. I did add two more layers to where I have that bruise down here. It's pretty much covered it right here. I would say I have about 75% coverage here. I would say I have 50% coverage. I'm going to take a flat eyeshadow packing brush from Jane Iredell. I'm going to see if I can use the small brush just to build up coverage. MAC Fix Plus further accelerate melding process with the skin. Now I'm going to avoid where I concealed. I'm going to use my dry sponge and I'm going to go through press in. I'm going to continue to try to build this up. Keep using that small eyeshadow brush. Diffuse the perimeter. Now I would say that we have about 85 to 90 percent coverage. There's a little bit. I'm not going to fuss with it too much. Here's how the Jane Iredell Pure Press Powder Foundation looks built up. I would say I have a solid medium pushing full coverage with this foundation. Depending on the brush that you use, you can sheer it out. This is definitely gonna give you more of a medium coverage because it is quite stiff. There isn't a lot of give to it. Whereas the smaller handy brush, it does have a little bit more flexibility to it. When you press down, it does kind of spread out. I'm gonna finish off the rest of my makeup and I will be right back to finish off this review with you. What are my thoughts on this? This Jane Iredale Pure Pressed Powder Foundation. You can't discredit that this is a really beautiful foundation. Does it give the most full or opaque coverage? No, like my little bruise is starting to peek back through, but you know, we have a pretty medium to medium full coverage foundation with the application technique that I use today. It's not a product that smooths the appearance of your skin texture, but it doesn't enhance it. It keeps it looking very true to life. On its own, it wants to lead to a natural matte finish, but you can adjust it with whatever you use underneath. I can't say this is my favorite powder foundation. It's by no means a bad foundation. It's just, it's a nice foundation. There is 23 shades, which I think the shade range has gotten bigger because I remember in 2019 when I was redoing my aesthetics training for Canada and we had to take a makeup for estheticians class. Jane Iredell was one of the brands we used, which is the first time I bought this foundation and that's where I got my compact. There was a girl in our class who there wasn't a shade in the loose or pressed to match her. She has a very rich skin tone. The foundation we ended up using is one from MAC. It was the Studio Fix Fluid in the shade NW55, which is a what MAC would consider a deep to dark foundation with red undertones. The deepest shade that we had in the Jane Iredell Pure Pressed, it was, it was workable, but it could sometimes lean a little kind of ashy on the skin, which is isn't the most ideal finish. So maybe that's been corrected by now. I'm not sure, but there is 23 shades where I thought there were only 20. In case I haven't mentioned it, I have shade Satin, which is classified as light and it has a neutral undertone. For me, it's workable. Sometimes it can feel a little yellow. Sometimes it can feel a little dark, but depending on what I layer with it, I can make it work really well for me. Application can be a little tricky. For Jane Iredell, there's a few different methods. You can use their flock sponge, which I'm not a huge fan of. Some people love it. Some people swear by it. I'm not a fan. There's also the chiseled foundation brush. For me, this is just kind of anemic in the coverage it gives. It's very sheer. It's very light. It's just, I feel like I have to really drape it on and just, I don't get coverage. And for me, I'm someone who gets sheer to like coverage on a daily basis. This is just, it, it, this brush with this foundation didn't do much for me. Then you have the dome brush. You can get foundation, but where this 
foundation is really kind of designed to be straight on. I find this just, just kind of, once again, it's, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, you can get around here. It's great for kind of doing around the eye area, but once again, not my favorite. Then you have the handy brush, which this was not in the kit that I got when I was at school. I bought this one separately. The trainer that came in to educate us on the brand, she said this was the best way to apply it. Went home, bought this offline. Not my favorite. You can build it up. This is going to give you a very sheer finish. But once again, I feel like I'm just building and building and building and I get tired of that. Makes me not want to reach for it. So this is nice. I prefer it for buffing and finishing powders. It's really beautiful for that. With the finish and everything of this product, I feel like most people, normal to combination to slightly oily skin might enjoy this. I don't feel like this has enough oil control for someone who is very, very oily. If you don't want to use a bunch of mattifying products under, this can get a little shiny throughout the day. As you can see now, I've had this on for about 45 minutes and my hydrating and the illuminating products and setting spray and the oils that have meshed with my skin have definitely given this a glow, even down the sides of my nose where I did take extra precautions to mattify. This foundation once again, it's another one that's very dependent on what you apply under it. People who want to stay shine free all day and don't want to use a bunch of different mattifying products underneath might not be the best pick for you. If you are someone who wants to be a little bit more budget conscious, for me, this is not the most economical foundation, which is not something we normally talk about here, but for the amount of product that you get, which just a reminder, you get 9.9 .9 grams for $57, which breaks down to about $5.76 Canadian per gram, which is a little pricey for a powder foundation. Of all of the powder foundations I've tried over the years, all the ones that I love, this is nice. I feel like if you want to stay a little bit more matte, you want a similar level of coverage, you want a little bit more flexibility. My favorite all time is still my MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation. And that one has been my favorite for, oh, oh goodness, over a decade now. <laughs> <laughs> been with it a long time. That's a really nice one. You can get nice powder foundations from the drugstore. I love the one that I tested out last year, which is the Milani Shine Proof Powder. If you want a mineral powder, you do have the Bare Minerals Loose Powder Foundations. Those you do need to do the swirl tap buffed method to really build it up. Those are a mineral formula, much like the Jane Iredell. There's the original, which is a little bit more luminous, and then there's the matte. If you're thinking about that in terms of the Jane Iredell, the original Bare Minerals will be more similar to the Amazing Base, which is their loose formula, and the matte will be a little bit more like the Pure Pressed formula. I don't know if it's still around, but Bare Minerals used to have the Bare Pro Powder Foundation, which I find is way more comparable to the MAC Studio Fix Powder than this is. This is a little bit more sheer. You don't get as much coverage. It is a little bit more lifelike on the skin versus the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. For how much this costs, I would just like a little bit more from it. Now, I will state that in a aesthetics. The reason we use Jane Iredell products in this is because a lot of them have been tested to do well for people who have post-procedure skin. So someone who's just had a chemical peel or microdermabrasion and they're maybe going back to work, they want a little bit of coverage to balance out some of the redness or they have an event to go to that night. These have been approved to be safe for that. I like to space my kind of treatments versus my makeup application, especially for a big event a few days apart, but that's just me. If you're someone who doesn't have the luxury of waiting between the two, then something like this is really nice. And Jane Iredell does have both liquid pressed and loose powder foundations available. So that is a pro to this. Overall, I feel like if it's something that you're really curious to try out, it might be nice. It's not a bad foundation. It's not my favorite. It's definitely, if we're ranking them, I would definitely put it into that good category. Not great. It's not holy grail, but it's definitely not a bad foundation. It's just, it's good. If you found today's foundation review helpful, formative, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share it with a friend that you think might enjoy it, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye y'all.